Due to recent actions by the Federal Trade Commission and the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, COPPA, YouTube has become a scary place for kids' content or content that might attract kids under the age of 13. The problem is defining exactly what content, kids' content, and content that attracts kids means. Heck, even some of the lawyers I follow online say the guidelines are too vague to make compliance easy. It's possible that simply reporting or mentioning things like recreation department activities, color run, Easter egg hunt, trunk or treat, street fair, etc., or police department related items like the Explorers Club, Cops for Kids, National Night Out, Neighborhood Visits, etc., parades, murals, Livingston Youth Football, Livingston High School Athletics, and so on could be caught up in YouTube's AI sweep for kid attractive content. That would not be a good thing. It's a nightmare for creators now. I don't want to take up a lot of time for all the gory details, but I do want to ask you to do something if you would please. In the description below this video, there is a link to a petition to save family-friendly content on YouTube. Please, please, please sign it. There is also a link to the FTC comment page and links to help you out if you don't quite know what to say. Just a few words. That's all I ask. The deadline is December 9th. With that out of the way, Greetings everyone, this is the Gardening Snail of Livingston, California. If you're interested in what's happening at City Hall, among other things, or just want to keep track of what our local politicians are up to, welcome to the channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when future videos are uploaded. Recognition of Livingston Police Explorer Post 518. This video includes a clip from the November 19th, 2019 City Council meeting. In it, Chief Ruben Chavez and the City Manager talk about the Explorer Post, which started seven years ago and has grown significantly over the years. They also talk about the growth and development of the explorers as individuals and the positive impact of the explorers on the community. You hit the face of the audience. Not like you haven't done that before because you guys are always in the community helping out. I apologize to council um, if their back's to you. I mean, we could probably have half front, half back, but uh, okay. I think We're it's good. important to have them facing the, the community. So we just want to take a few minutes to acknowledge the work of the Explorer Post and uh, Officer Baldivia. Well, he's in the back taking pictures. Um, we started this post together, uh, the city manager and I started this post together about seven years ago. And they have, hey guys, come up front. These guys, this, this troop has been a, Human, humongous uh, benefit to the city. Not only do they provide a lot of uh, volunteer time directing traffic in different events, at parades, going into way details, directing traffic, making sure people don't get to where they're, that they're not supposed to be. It's also a, an organization that helps to, to build them as leaders in the future. They, they learn list, discipline, teamwork, uh, leadership skills, uh, we have one uh, explorer, Isaac, who will be joining the uh, National Guard here coming up next year. We have another explorer who's actually got hired by Modesto PD. These, these folks, they learn a lot of skills and they go on to do great things. And we're just so proud of the work they do. In fact, um, I just got a check. They helped with the crab feed, the uh, rotary crab feed last Saturday. They helped with, the, uh, with that event. And the Brandon Friesen uh, just provided a, a donation of $500 for their work. And this is very common for them. It's, it's a tribute to what they do in their community. Um, and I'll let, Jose, I'll let the city manager take it over, but I can't thank them enough. Um, you see them out there, a lot of events, and they do it, they get it at heart. Right now, we have a, a detail where they're out at the police department 
signing up families to see Santa Claus in this room, and I think there was like eight of them today, and, and they're just excited to serve the community and serve the department. So I just want to thank them, and uh, Jose. Yeah, thank you very much, Chief. I want to, help, I want to thank the Chief uh, for his leadership and uh, the department, because without the department and the Chief, um, really this program uh, would be splintered, would probably not be working the way it's currently working. And I also want to thank all of the explorers for all the service hours. But I want to talk a little bit more of how deep this particular organization um, is having a great impact, not only here in Livingston, but in the region. So we do a lot of regional work, but here locally, uh, you know, there's a, every event that we have, you know, they're, one way or another, they're, they're actually participating. And the fact that, that, uh, that they can exercise and we can develop leaders here locally, you know, making sure that there's activities for them, you know, after hours, uh, the fact that they are also our uh, liaisons within the community and with their own parents and their own siblings, that means a lot. And so for that, I really want to thank you. So I want to, I want to share just a little bit about what they've done uh, in 2019. In 2019, uh, they've participated in the Pebble Beach, Laguna Seca, the EJ Gallo events, all the festivals, the parades, football games, special events, uh, and just all kinds of just charity events like uh, the chief mentioned with uh, the Rotary Club. Uh, so to date, that's been 89 different activities uh, with the total of, the, uh, we're talking over 3,000 hours of community service, about, uh, let's see, a total of, what's, okay, so the grand total is 12,238 hours. Can you, just give them a round of applause. That's a lot of So with the little bit of, so what $5,000 of seed money did, you know, back in 2012, you know, has, has helped the community, uh, you know, become a more, better knit community, because as you can see, it's very diverse, and I like to see all the young females participating as well, and we have, uh, we have a lot of great participation, a lot of respect, so for that, I thank you all, thank you, Chief, and again, give them another round of applause. Thank you, and these type of organizations couldn't be possible with a great staff, and I, I want to acknowledge Officer Baldiva. He's been it from the get-go and just done an outstanding job uh, just leading them, and, and he's invested so many hours in these kids, and, it, 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 and it, it shows. These kids are doing great things. In fact, I forgot to mention, I think Julian's going to be joining the, the, uh, the military next year too, right? The Army? Go Army. Sergeant Fong likes that. Be all you could be. So, and we have a rank structure. We actually have captains, lieutenants, sergeants. They learn that rank structure, and that helps them in the future. So, again, thank you, guys and girls. I appreciate all the work you do and continue to work. And uh, we will uh, we will see you at the next event. Thank you. If you like this kind of content, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, check out the description below this video for those links to the FTC petition and comment page I mentioned earlier. I am including a link to the most recent Utility Rate Stakeholders Committee meetings in the video description below this since the next Proposition 218 hearing is not too far away. I am also including the contact information for the County Supervisor, city manager, and city council members just in case you want to contact them directly.